Hey everyone, Noodle here. Tis the season to hunt holiday scourged and collect gifts. Many of you are familiar with this seasonal event, holiday scourged, and many of you are brand new to Fallout 76 and have no idea what this madness is all about and how to make the best of it. This event is not clear cut like Fasnacht or some of the storylines, but there are a lot of cool rewards, including some fun new ones. The ultimate goal of the event is to collect gifts. So regardless of whether you are a seasoned or a baby vault dweller, in this video, I will show you the best and fastest ways to find the most Holiday Scorch to kill. I will share some of my favorite routes to take, offer new and refreshing tips and tricks, and I have some exciting news about the Sanatron, what it is, how to get it, and why it's so awesome. So let's get to it. Most events in Fallout 76 have a beginning and an end, and set times when the event runs. Holiday Scorched is one of the exceptions to the rule. The event itself is an ongoing experience that lasts for two weeks. During this time, any location that usually spawns Scorched may also spawn a small percentage of what are known as Holiday Scorched. You will recognize them by the jingle bell sound they emit, and also by the colorful costumes that they are wearing. When you kill a Holiday Scorched, you'll collect a bunch of goodies from them, including gifts. There are three kinds of gifts, small, medium, and large, and their loot increases with their size. Large Holiday Gifts are more rare but have the higher chance of dropping cooler plans and rewards. The more Holiday Scorched you kill and collect from, the more awesome things you get. Now you'll see a lot of videos out there showing you every single location of Holiday Scorched on the map and it's all just a little too overwhelming. So let's take it one step at a time and make your Holiday Scorched the most optimized and efficient. Scorched are a very common enemy in the game. You're bound to run into them just by wandering around Appalachia, doing your dailies or following the story missions. But if you want to get your hands on many Scorched at once to maximize your chances of getting these sweet, sweet gifts, there are a few ways to find Scorched gatherings. One way is to trigger and enter a Scorched Rich event. My favorite is Collision Course. This event can be triggered at Morgantown Airport. If you arrive here and see this pillar of smoke, that means that someone just ran the event and it needs time to reset. Just come back later. If you see this and are able to start the event, you're golden. What you'll get here are five waves of Scorched. That's a lot of Scorched. A few of them are bound to be holiday, right? Don't mind the Scorched Beast. It just flies overhead, it doesn't actually ever attack. This event is not very difficult at all. I often complete it by myself. The more people at the event though, the more enemies the game will send at you. So consider that as well. More enemies means more chances to encounter Holiday Scorched. Be mindful though that the Holiday Scorched spawning is random. Sometimes you'll get five of them in one wave and sometimes you'll get none. If you get none, don't get discouraged. I have many more tricks up my sleeve to get you those gifts. Another way to attract a swarm of Scorched is to visit Fisher sites. Here you may have to face some Scorch Beasts though, so again, consider going with a group of friends or joining a team that's already there if you need some extra firepower and also to attract a ridiculous number of Scorched. I'm here alone this early morning and still I see some of these guys are in costumes. I actually got quite a few gifts on this small Fisher run. All of the tips that I'm sharing with you today are both for solo play and team play. It's all up to you how you like to do this but just know that you can absolutely do all of this alone and at a low level, at any level, and still make out like a bandit. Oh, and before we continue, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who always leaves us super chats. We love you guys and we really appreciate all the help and the support. Thank you so much to the super chat and the super thanks people. Thank you so much to our channel members and our patrons. You guys rock. If you're not one of those cool people yet, please consider joining. Every bit of help is hugely appreciated and needed. If volunteering to be bait for swarms of Scorched isn't your thing and you prefer to roam Appalachia hitting familiar locations along the way, then consider routes. 
Following specific planned routes will save you a lot of time and help you plan your travel expenses. I like to use this map called Mappalachia. Here's the link to it, and this particular screen shows you all the Scorched locations and the concentrations of Scorched. Keep in mind though, this hasn't been updated in a while. So for instance, the whole new map expansion isn't here. But I found that the rest is still true and accurate. Looking at this map, we can see clusters of spawn points that look very promising. Instead of jumping all over the map, hitting just the big targets, I suggest planning a route that's near your camp or workshop or that of a teammate. If you collect all on your killing spree, you will quickly get fat. And it's nice to be able to swing by your house or teammate's house and freshen up a bit before the murder run continues. So if you're generally located in this area here, you may want to take a route like this. It doesn't have to be any longer than seven or eight stops. This will take you about 15 minutes and will get you a handful of gifts with a high chance of getting at least one large gift. If you're in this area here, you may consider a route like this, for instance. If you're way over in the east in the mire, I like going from north to south following this general route. I have my own favorite route though. Let me show you. I like to run a forest route, starting from Wavy Willard's Water Park. This is actually my number one favorite location for Holiday Scorched. It's way the hell up north and isn't really near anything. And there are no free travel stations in that area either, which makes this a not so popular location. That's great for us. One of the biggest challenges in this event is having to compete with all the other players. You will often arrive at a location that looks great just to discover that everyone's already dead. And there are only so many times you can bounce servers before the game just stops being fun. So plan your route smartly. On my route, I will show you locations where I always get lots of loots, as well as locations that may seem desirable, but actually tend to just be too popular during these events. So, Wavy Willards, huge success. Large holiday gift on my first kill. And I got like five holiday scorched here. I was all alone, I got all the loot, and it was super easy. Love this location. My next stop is usually Tyler County Fairgrounds. I won't make you sit through every single one of my 17 stops on this route, but I will point out some of the best and some of the most disappointing ones. Morgantown Airport, for instance, if you're not running the collision course event there, 90% of the time, huge disappointment. But only during the holiday Scorched event. In normal times, this is my go-to location for Scorched. These days, during holiday Scorched, it's everyone's go-to location. It just gets too popular. It's like Grand Central Station. So it looks promising on the map. In reality, I usually just skip over it on my route. Helvetia is going to be another one of those overpopulated areas, especially right after Fasna. So check it out, but don't hold your breath. Sutton, on the other hand, even though it's really close, is usually a big success for me. This little hidden area right here, I always get at least two or three holiday scorched here. Some relay towers have scorched and usually don't attract a lot of players but sometimes they also don't attract a lot of Holiday Scorched either, so Relay Tower, hit or miss. Worth a detour in my opinion though. Poseidon Power Substation and Poseidon Energy Plant are both great locations. You're very likely to get 5 to 10 Holiday Scorched or more between these two places. They're just teeming with Scorched, so even if other players run through, they will always miss quite a few of them. Remember to listen for those jingle bells. Don't just look for the costumes. I find all of my holiday scorched just by sound. AVR Medical Center is another gem in my book. I like to make a detour all the way down here to Camden Park. Much like Wavy Willards, it's a bit out of the way for most people. So it tends to be pretty quiet. You can easily get five or six holiday scorched here. And then I like to end my route with this whole cluster around the lake, ending with the manors. This area is so rich with Scorched. I think there's enough for everyone here. Oh, wow, she's gorgeous, isn't she? I wish I could have that painting in my house. I have the other paintings from this manor, but I don't know if this one's ever actually available. I complete this whole route in about half an hour. It's a little longer than my proposed routes around your camp. Reason being, I don't actually collect anything other than fuel and gifts. I'm on a specific mission to get rare plants, and I don't get distracted with looting the locations. I don't care about legendary weapons at this point either, they're just heavy. 
fuel and gifts. That's it. 30 minutes tops. Can be even faster. And this route strategically ends between my camp and White Spring. While I've been running around killing Scorched, my dog Collectron has been gathering gifts for me. I have a separate video on how to make your dog do this. Check it out here if you haven't already. The bottom line is what you actually need to set up in your camp is the Sanatron. And great news! Bethesda heard everyone's cries of despair and disappointment and made the Sanatron available in the Atomic Shop for free for the next 12 days. So go grab it. This is an excellent camp item that is a must-have. There's no excuse not to get it. And like I explained in the Sanatron video, you don't even have to look at it, listen to it, or live with it in any way. You can trick your other Collectrons to do his job. His job being, of course, collecting gifts. Remember that you can also set up this Collectron in your workshops to increase your gift collecting. Alrighty. I've been killing and collecting for about an hour now, and I got a ton of gifts of all sizes. I opened some in White Spring and some at my camp. I got this really adorable bunny backpack on my first run over at Wavy Willards. This is a brand new item, so I'm very excited to have gotten it so quickly. I also got some nice camp decorations that I had my eye on, and of course the usual. I love all the fuel I get back, and then some. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my new friend Bwari for getting me this Jitterbug Judy outfit. He heard in my last video that I really wanted and he just gave it to me. That's really cool. We're all gonna get a ton of repeat plans in this event. Give your stuff away, trade it, make new friends. It's Christmas, sort of. Okay, Wastelanders, we've done a lot of running, a lot of killing, and a lot of collecting today. I hope you picked up some awesome new tips and tricks to make your Holiday Scorched experience a little bit less stressful and confusing, and a lot more fun and efficient. If that's the case, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and toss a coin to your noodle pants with a super thanks to show your support and appreciation. That would be me, um, Noodle Pants, one half of Game of Aviator. And until next time, stay safe out there, vault dwellers. In the heart of West Virginia, where the shadows creep and sway, lies a land of rusted dreams, where the brave dare not stray. Appalachia, oh, it's a treacherous ride, with dangers untold and nowhere.